So a special thanks to our sponsors, Abvi, Bristol Myers Squibb, Amgen Oncology, Genentech, Cario Farm Therapeutics, Oncopeptides, Adaptive Biotechnologies, and Decada Oncology. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you our featured speaker. Mary Sage is a myeloma coach with HealthTree. She lives with her husband, Michael, her son, and two dogs in the Pacific Northwest region. Mary and Michael have seven kids between them and four grandkids. She was diagnosed with stage two IgG lambda in 2015 and placed on immediate disability due to several spinal fractures, severe pain, and limited mobility. Like many others prior to diagnosis, she experienced years of bizarre blood results and chronic back pain that was becoming increasingly debilitating. Mary had a stem cell harvest in 2016 and a stem cell transplant in 2019. Currently, her blood work shows standard risk of multiple myeloma. Her MRD is positive with five parts per million. Her maintenance treatment is Darzalex Fast Pro. So just a little bit of background why we chose this topic. After last month's session, we sent a survey in our follow-up email asking what topics you'd be interested in learning about more this year during uh, throughout this chapter. And we received incredible feedback from you. And the most popular topic that was requested was this one, items that you'll need in those first 30 days. Thus, we decided that this session should be about that topic. Today, we'll be discussing the items that you will need for those first 30 days of the SCT procedure and recovery. Mary has worked incredibly hard in this presentation and has sought advice from her peers and fellow patients about their inpatient and outpatient experiences, including what the COVID-19 restriction SCT procedure requires. What you will see today is an amazing collaborative effort and um, product, product of extremely hard work. Mary, I'm excited for the group to hear your presentation and the time is now yours. Thank you, Audrey and HealthTree for sharing this information. Gathering items for a transplant adventure can be overwhelming. Look at this photo. Notice the plate and utensils? That was me. I packed like I was going on vacation or camping. Once in the hospital for a week, I pared it down to one suitcase without the plate and utensils. Please keep COVID-19 in mind when packing or arranging visitors. Check with your team in hospital for guidelines. Food must be kept in an unopened original container. Outside foods may not be permitted. A recent transplant patient informed me that even items like chapstick had to be in its original packing. Inpatient versus outpatient. Transplant patients typically fall in one to two groups, inpatient or outpatient. What's the difference? You're considered an inpatient if you have serious medical issues that need to be monitored. Example, I have a heart condition and my cardiologist wanted me monitored in the hospital for two weeks after my transplant. Outpatient, typically you're in the hospital for your chemo delivery, also knows conditioning. This may take two to four days. Next, you are soft released to nearby lodging or homes, depending on your distance to the clinic. I'm using the term soft release, meaning you're out of the hospital, but returning to the clinic for checkups. For outpatient, you're soft released around day four and inpatient around day 15. The patient is required to reside within 15 minutes of the clinic or hospital. Once you are soft released, you return to the clinic for blood draws and evaluation until you reach 30 days from your transplant. Transplant patients were asked, what did you take with you? From their responses, a shopping list of items was created. Some said they packed their yoga mat, a PlayStation, a bed topper, then added they never used most items. When you're packing, think of what you might like to have around you when you're sick at home. How can you make yourself feel more comfortable? Some of the items on are action items or to-do items. While you can't pack at all, you want to check some of those to-do items off your list. Next is the table developed from this survey. Don't panic when you see this table. It is comprehensive. Don't try to write it all down. Remember, a PDF of the presentation is available afterwards. The table is broken down into groups. I will revisit this table at the end of the presentation. The next few slides highlight items you may want with you or action items taken prior to your transplant check-in. Before you check in for your transplant, call your healthcare insurance and ask if they offer home healthcare assistance or supplies for your post-recovery. Many do. These items are needed for both outpatient and inpatient to help care for your catheter or port. You will have a catheter or port 
for days negative one through 30. Also ask if they provide disposable bed pads and gloves. Some items you will want to have provided are saline syringes, parafilm cover for your catheter or port protection while showering, alcohol wipes, which are also good for removing tape residue off your skin, and a biohazard container. Actions before your stem cell plant transplant. Your team may provide you with advanced directives paperwork. Please consider completing this before you check in. If your team did not provide this paperwork, ask your social worker or go online and find forms. Before you leave for the transplant or while you're out of your home, have someone deep clean or replace your air filters. Include the filters over your stove. I have metal filters. I simply place them in my dishwasher for an easy clean and hot water in dishwasher soap. Water purifiers you may look into are something like a Brita or zero water. You may also want to add a purifier to your home water system. Also consider a filter cap for your personal water bottle or filtering water bottle. You'll want to keep aromas down. Consider a fragrance-free detergent. Infection prevention, we'll dive into this later. Keep a list of helpers or contact info. Create a list of helpers and what is offered for assistance like taking care of pets, lives nearby, can pick up items and so on. Post the list at home and carry a copy with you. It's easy to pull out the list and make calls or emails. Both outpatient and inpatient will experience day negative one through day four in the hospital. Notice it reads negative one. The days prior to day zero are negative numbers. The patient receives conditioning therapy during this time. You want to bring such comfort items as dry mouth spray, Hospital air can be drying. I also brought saline nasal spray, hand cream, hard candy. Some experience an odd taste during the transplant process. The hard candy helps. Electronic devices with extra long charging cords, a laundry bag, soft clothing in layers, and we'll expand on that later. Toiletry items may be provided by the hospital, but you'll want to bring your favorite items with you. Remember, Avoid items with a heavy scent. Some facilities do not permit scents, oils, or perfumes. You will shower every day, so bring enough for you for every day while you're away from home. The outpatient is soft released to nearby lodging and will be checking into the clinic daily until day 15 when clinic visits may decrease. Outpatient travel to the clinic daily. Be sure to keep items in your car to ensure a comfortable trip. Keep a second set of these items at your offsite lodging. Around this time, diarrhea hits fast and you may not make it to the commode, especially while you're traveling. As you travel to your daily appointments, you want to carry a change of underwear, wipes, and ointment to soothe the skin. Don't forget your barf bags. Remember to keep some in the car. Bed pads can be used also in your car seat. Wipes and depends. Get your size before you go into the hospital. The ones in a hospital are one size fits all and they're made for giants. Bring water bottles. Carry them with you everywhere. During this time, your CBC numbers are struggling and hydration is key. Even if you drink copious amounts of water, you may need to be hydrated via an IV or receive platelets. This will keep you at the clinic longer than anticipated, sometimes up to eight hours. Carry a go bag in case you get checked in or have a long clinic day. Soft release to nearby lodging day four for outpatients and day 15 for inpatients. Once released to nearby lodging, your clinic visits may decrease to two to three times a week depending on your progress. You may still experience the effects of chemo and the transplant process and increased fatigue. The diarrhea may be more controlled and less frequent. Every patient is different. Items you may need during this time, books, magazines, or puzzles, your chapstick, disposable towels, earplugs, extra underwear, eye drops and eye mask, hand sanitizer everywhere. Monitor your diarrhea, paper masks, get plenty for you and your caregivers, sunscreen 30 plus and sunscreen clothing, this may be the time you start to lose your hair on your face and head. While platelets are low, you're permitted only to use an electric razor. Some hospitals provide this. 
Home sweet home. Both outpatient and inpatient are released to home around day 30. Typically on day 30, your catheter or port is removed and your shower prep is eliminated. You may experience heavy night sweats or even in the daytime. You will want to have the following on hand. Bed pads for night sweats. Change of night clothing. Night sweats can be heavy. You want to keep, you want to not sleep in a wet shirt or gown. Prevent constipation. Plan breaks for your primary caregivers. Make sure your caregivers are not overwhelmed. This is a long process for all. The next slides will highlight items to do actions for outpatient and inpatient. Before you return home from your stem cell transplant, some things you want to have done. Deep clean your home, carpets and floors and dusting. Remember, only clean where you live. If you don't live in the attic, don't clean the attic. Don't forget the air ducts. Food, take precautions and keep food safety in mind. You want to have a food thermometer, prep small meals, Try protein drinks. Constipation. While you just fought profuse diarrhea, now you may need to watch for constipation caused by prescribed medications. Confirm with your team before taking any meds not on your prescription list. Compact con constipation with high fiber foods and hydration. Stool softeners may be needed, but please check with your team first. Get your medications updated before you go into your stem cell transplant. A printed medication list will help you remember what meds to take when, and it helps your caregiver help you. Print your list and place it throughout the home. Infection prevention. Next slide, Audrey. Mask and gloves everywhere. Hand sanitizer everywhere. Get a thermometer for you to use and use it as directed. Something we may not think about is get a new toothbrush and get plenty to replace them every three months. Clothing layers. Loved my leggings and sweatpants. Gloves, fingerless gloves so you can work on your devices. I have neuropathy in my hands. So fingerless gloves help me at least keep my hands warm and I can warm up my fingertips. I loved my soft lap blanket. I used it instead of the rough sheets and blankets in the hospital. Soft hat and socks. PJs that accommodate a catheter or port, which means you want them to button up or zip it up the front. I loved my zipper hoodie. I wore it all the time. And you could put your hoodie on your head when it was too cold or too warm. A soft wrap for your seatbelt. Simple felt with Velcro. Wrap it around your seatbelt, helps protect your port. Meditation. Download mindfulness apps such as Calm. You may also receive some cassettes or CDs from your transplant team. Find a mentor, a safe place to laugh, cry, or vent. Keep a journal. You never know when you'll be asked to give a presentation. Seek support for your journey. That may be different people spiritual, mental, or physical helpers. Over-the-counter drugs, just say no. Ask before you take any over-the-counter drugs to make sure they don't conflict with the prescriptions that you're given. Ice, ice baby. Prep for your ice experience one to two weeks prior. If you have sensitive teeth like me, you wanna try something like Sensodyne toothpaste for at least two weeks to prep your mouth. There's no getting around this three hour adventure. You can ask for popsicles or add flavor to your ice. Bathroom supplies. We'll, you'll be spending a lot of time in the bathroom. Consider something like a butt cream to help soothe the diarrhea and rash that comes with it. You might consider a temporary commode near your bedside so you can make it to the bathroom on time. Grab bars or heavy, with heavy suction cups for your shower can temporarily be added to your shower walls for safety. A shower chair. The first few weeks you may feel weak and exhausted and you want to be safe while you're in the shower. Soft toilet paper and wipes. Carry a roll with you because you never know what the hospital will bring. 
soft tissues, the same thing. They have the roughest tissues in the, in the hospitals. Grab your favorite brand and carry them with you. More shower tape, first 30 days until your port or catheter is removed, you'll need to protect the open ends of that port. Toilet safety frame. You'll want in the upper left-hand corner, this is a simple frame you can add to the back of your home toilet. Another great item to use while you're away from home is your walker. And begin walking and building muscles before and after the stem cell transplant. Bring cards and stamps and pens and contact lists with you. I created thank you cards for each nurse to help me in the hospital. I also use the time to create my Christmas list. Get plenty of sleep. Strengthen your lungs by using your spirometer. If you've been on an MM journey for a while, chances are you have one, or like me, three around the house. Use this to keep your lungs clear. You can get one from your physical therapist or online at your favorite shopping site. You may want to get a collapsible cane or use a walker for your dizzy days. Let's revisit the shopping list. Here we are. As promised, remember, a PDF is available afterwards. As you can see, this table is broken down into groups. Every item covered today is listed on the table. Keep in mind, while the column indicates out or inpatient, the items are used by both groups just at different times. The red items are things you should do before your stem cell transplant. The purple and green highlight outpatient, hospital stays, day four through day 15. Brown is your inpatient days, negative one through day 15. Blue, close lodging days for both inpatient and outpatient. The last column and the column at the bottom, the black columns, list items that we talked about through this entire slide. That is your main shopping list. You may find you'll want these items for all or part of your journey. This process is a shared journey. While we covered the basics for what to bring to the stem cell transplant, this journey goes well beyond the first 100 days. It's about you, you and your care team, you and your caregiver, you and your health. You are in control. Be your own best advocate. Take care of you, body, mind, and spirit. Thank you for your time today.